as a pharmacist, I would hear from so many people in your situation, I'm going to let you share your story, but that they felt like it was almost their life sentence now that they were diagnosed. So give us your story. Um, sure. You're, yeah. I'm just so uh, awesome. Well, first, thank you for inviting me to your Facebook Live and to your podcast that it will go out to your podcast. So my story basically started, um, you know, I'm going to start with the, the type 2 diabetes as we're talking about you being a pharmacist. And uh, I grew up in a family that has uh, generational type 2 diabetes. And I grew up as, okay, this is part of life. And about, two, so that was about uh, 15 years to 20 years of managing my type 2 diabetes with my doctors and, you know, going up and down on a roller coaster type of ride. Uh, about two years ago, I got involved with the Holistic Chamber of Commerce when I moved down to Florida and was introduced to a life coach who I partnered up with to do a sugar course. And during that deep dive of learning about the sugars and the impact on type 2 diabetes, I, was, I came across a couple of articles about reversing type 2 diabetes, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was shocked because uh, reading these articles, these people have had reversed their type 2 diabetes, and um, it really upset me because I was not really directed in that fashion. Um, all those years, I was managing my type 2 diabetes, and I just had to you know, be careful of what I was eating. Um, but not really told this is what you can do to reverse your type 2 diabetes. So that really was a rude awakening because um, unfortunately my dad passed away from type 2 diabetes, heart disease, as well as a, an amputation mm -hmm. of his leg. And then uh, a couple years later, his sister died of heart disease and amp um, excuse me, type 2 diabetes, and then his younger brother did. So, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm next in line. So with that, that was really the catalyst to really get me um, on top of my own game here. And I walked into my doctor and I said, uh, new revelation here, I wanna get my A1C down to 5.0. And her response was, well, why do you wanna do that? And I'm like, are you serious? Uh, you're the doctor. And I said, forget it, Never mind. As of today, I'm taking 100% control of my health and my lifestyle, and I'm going to get my A1C down to 5.0 and reverse my type 2 diabetes and come off of the meds that you have been prescribing me, um, which are damaging my gut. That's the bottom line. And her mm -hmm. mouth just dropped to the floor. So, um, so I started that journey uh, last January of 2019. And then um, by August, I had lost 60 pounds and reversed my type 2 diabetes. So I, I my, my A1C was up into the, um, it was as high as 13. When I started the program, uh, it was 7.7 .7 and I got it down to 5.3. So those that know what the A1C is, anything below 5.5 .5 is non, considered non-diabetic. So that was part one of my journey, and now I'm on part two. I've got um, some more things that I want to work on, and you know, from a strength perspective, because I'm incorporating strength um, building this year in 2020, mm -hmm. um, because we need to have those muscles. As I'm getting older, I'm 65 years old. Um, I want to be able to support my structure, my skeletal structure with some good muscle, and you can do that, because um, what I've learned is getting old doesn't have to suck. Um, if, you learn, it, if you learn how, um, what you can eat and what you shouldn't be eating, that's all it's about. It's, you know, bottom line is, is food is medicine. And all these years we've been eating crappy food. So this is just magical. And I hope everyone that's listening, watching, whatever, um, is just getting hopeful because in my field of pharmacy, if anything, you saw people add medications and get worse. And the fact that you started at 13, you said, for your A1C, yes. um, which is like the average of your blood readings for like the last 90 days. So what, what was the first, because obviously you had probably many things that you could have tackled um, at that point in time, what was like the first thing that you started to make small changes with? 
So I started with a program called B3, and it's basically body brain biome. And it really got me to educate myself about the microbiome because this is the new science that's disrupting the health and wellness industry. And it's all about gut health and learning the significance of this intricate system, if you will. Um, it is a uh, game changer to living a uh, a physically and mentally um, uh, well. Uh, you know, you can live physically and mentally because they work together synergistically. Because mm -hmm. we grew up learning about physical health, go to phys ed, but we didn't go to mental ed. Mm -hmm. And um, today there's that huge correlation. And so learning about that uh, microbiome, it allowed me to really um, investigate, you know, uh, about the the right supplementation because we do need good supplementation today because unfortunately our lands are depleted of the nutrients because of all the um, uh, 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 the chemicals that are used on the plants, you know, with with Roundup and glyphosate being a huge contributor to everything that we've got going on um, in the United States here because it's in ingested into or injected into um, the what is it the um the genes of corn and soy and this started back in the 70s through my research i found out and for those that are watching it's like think about back in the 60s and the 70s and maybe the early 80s what were your grandparents doing they were playing golf they were going on cruises they're going to here they're going there now the grandparents today they're in and out of the doctor's offices mm -hmm. so it's we've been consuming all those foods and bad things um over those years on top of the pharmaceuticals because i started out with metformin then i went to statins and then i went to two other medications and it just kept getting worse compounding the the effect so with that learning about the right supplementation exercise Mm -hmm. um, nutrition and stress management. Stress management is massive because stress today is uh, the World Health Organization says it's the number one killer. It, stress leads to all types of disease, um, which is becoming very, very evident through the studies. And with that, it's, it's incremental changes. Um, it didn't happen overnight. Um, uh, I, for me personally, I had to ante up on my exercise because I, I had to lose 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. And then um, my eating habits, I actually went plant-based because uh, plants, uh, and if I did protein, I did organic chicken and wild salmon. That was mm -hmm. it for any kind of meat protein, but everything else was plant-based, which had a significant uh, impact on you know losing the weight and um, becoming uh, more physically fit and having more energy as well as um, mental clarity, less anxiety, uh, less stress, and um, providing more stress resilience. So you definitely see the link between gut health and just so many different levels of health. Your your diabetes. Uh, your your mental health, you you can definitely say yes. As you Big feel. time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and you know, this, uh, this is really coming, um, Dr. Rachel, t to me in the last six months, because I've been evaluating and really reflecting on um, since I was a teenager. Um, you know, I had a lot of things going on when I was a teenager. There was chemical dependency. There were two suicide attempts. Um, you know, on top of uh, coming out as a gay male, a lot of pressure back in the 70s and the 80s, and um, coming through that journey um, had its own inner, um, I, say, I say it's build a bridge and get over it, and it was mm -hmm. buried, but all of that has come out, has been uh, um, unearthed, if you will, and it's all gone. It, it's like it's been released. And reflecting on this over the last couple of months, it's it's been amazing that those of us who go through that journey and bury a lot of that, a lot of people see us on the outside. Oh, he's doing great. She's doing great. And this is happening. This is happening. But they don't know what's going on in the inside, mm -hmm. you know, up here as well as down there in the gut, you know, because it's always your gut is turned around and you got the stomach aches, you got this problem, you got that problem. So that has been a, a total revelation for me 
in regards to mental wellness. And mm -hmm. we, all, we all deal with that in some um, fashion, um, you know, through our lives. Yes. And it seems to me, too, that the stigma is being lifted about talking about mental wellness. We, like you mentioned about physical health, we've, we had phys ed in school, but we never had a class to say, like, talk about your feelings, talk about whatever. And so your mental health is probably more important than your physical health. I, I would agree with that. Men so. Mental wellness is the new physical health these days. So you also healed because you had those things earlier in your lifetime that you dealt with. That was part of the piece that you had to heal in order to heal the diabetes, would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, you know, it, it, uh, it all starts with self-love. I didn't really understand what that meant. And you know, um, you have to love yourself first before you can love anybody else, because once you accept who you are and what you're doing um, at that level and you're comfortable with it, then uh, your whole, you, the whole aura of your life changes mm -hmm. physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, that's been a huge thing change for me this year because I blocked out um, spirituality faith, um, all of those things are part of the formula. You know, this is, life is a formula and there's different modalities, different elements that we need to incorporate um, because if you don't, there's always that missing piece to the puzzle, if you will, that um, you're going through life thinking, what's missing? What's missing? Mm -hmm. And um, being able to get um, and understand the significance of your gut healing and the correlation to the mind uh, is pretty amazing. And, you know, people may not understand that from a, from a um, conversation perspective, but the science is there. It's backing that. And that, that was one of the clinching factors for me because I'm a so ex-software engineer. I'm a geek. I wanted the proof, you know, and uh, the proof is there. And it's going to continue. And I can't wait to see what happens in three mm -hmm. years or five years. Because, you know, right now we're in the forefront of this whole science in regards to the platform that we are um, participating in that is so exciting so, and yeah. so revolution. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and it is. It's becoming, like you said, it's disrupting the health and wellness field totally because it's becoming you're hearing people talk about gut health you're hearing people talk about microbiome and what does that mean and right. diversity of your bacteria so just going back to you talking about be becoming more spiritual and faith-based and that's a hard one like i'm finding i'm on that journey myself i think right. we're always how did you go from now like pushing it aside to kind of incorporating it like again what small steps did you start bringing in so I started to um, pray uh, more because I never, I never would really pray. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to incorporate that. I started to incorporate the, um, uh, the meditation aspect of it and being able to think outside of, I was raised Roman Catholic and you, you. you've always heard the Roman Catholic guilt. And that was holding me back for so many years, so many years. And um, that one I did build a bridge and get over uh, because, it, you know, it's so much more than organized religion. Uh, and being able to um, open my mind and open up my heart to other ways of thinking, other ways of, um, you know, uh, uh, spirituality. You know, we go, I, I've been looking at, um, you know, the Native Indian rituals and looking into that and, you know, really grounding yourself with Mother Earth and mm -hmm. um, their spirituality and um, their way of loving and things like that, um, which is really, it's refreshing. It, mm -hmm. It's actually refreshing. I'm going to a, um, a, a celebration for a, a, a Hindu um, uh, um, 
meditation um, person and and Ram and and that's going to be this Sunday. So it's it's opening up to other, you know, Hinduism and then you've got all kinds of different religions and you know we all. I think that there's just that one God, whether it's God or Buddha or whoever you worship, it's, it's that, that one entity. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we can embrace that through all kinds of people and all kinds of, of religions. Yeah, totally agree. And it's just letting that higher energy, that universal power that we, is, is there that just allowing that to speak to you and through you. And that's right. so powerful. And I love with you too. So you not only took on this venture for yourself, but because of all the success that you have had on this journey, you are like getting out there and you're sharing this. So what has, I mean, what has been the most, do you have a particular story that's been the most rewarding to you or just what keeps you going even on those days that you, you know, doesn't feel like as entrepreneurs, we have days. It's like, Oh Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, what are some of the things that just you've had happen that keep you going? Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple of things, Dr. Rachel. So number one is we have to get out of our own way. You know, um, we all go through certain role, you know, life is, is a journey. It's a roller coaster journey. We go up and down and up and down. And, um, you know, I, I still was going through my insecurities and my self doubt, my self worth, um, last year, um, going through that. And I really got to the point in, in August, September of last year to say, you know what, um, as a great, um, you know, a uh, coach mentor and, and, uh, incredible, um, lady, um, Brooke, uh, live out loud. Well, now I'm living out loud because we definitely have something in our hands that is, um, having a profound, profound, um, and I'm going to say significantly impact on people's lives. The stories that I'm reading, the stories that I'm hearing, talking with people, um, whether I'm on the phone or in person, uh, of of thing of their lives being completely changed, where they weren't getting out of bed in the morning. Now they're getting out of bed. Um, one of my, um, you know, uh, um, one of the women that I'm working with has been basically, you know, house ridden for 15 years, and she's out driving. Um, she's mm -hmm. out attending family functions. Her kids are like, "Mom, we've got the old mom back," and. Um, those are the stories um, when that you, you know, we're here to plant seeds. We're here to provide hope. We're here to provide encouragement. Ultimately, um, those individuals, you know, they have to make their own decision. And, and some people just, the, the seed is planted and um, we hope that it germinates. And sometimes it doesn't germinate and it is what it is. We can't, we can't, uh, we're not here to force it. We're here to encourage and enlighten people with something that's new, unique, different. Um, so that's, you know, one of the things is really getting out of my own way. But then number two is I've experienced it. And why should I hold that back? I'm not gonna hold that back, you know? And um, I want to be able to provide value. I want to be able to provide, um, you know, self-worth because we all have a mission. We all have a purpose here on this earth. And um, many, of, many of us at one point um, didn't know what that purpose was, but many of us have found that purpose. I've found the purpose now. Because, you know, being, a, I call myself a monkey keyboard banger for 20 some odd years, being a software engineer, sitting behind a desk, you know, working for corporate America, it wasn't cutting it for me. And I wanted to do something of value. I wanted to be able to leave this earth saying I did something that was, that made an impact. And whether it's one person that I've turned their life completely around or a hundred I'm hoping for thousands. That's, that's, my, that's my dream. And I want to be a servant leader. I want to be able to serve people 
and um, be able to give back and provide that. So getting out of my own way, sharing my story from the mountaintops because I'm going to be Moses and say, hey, we're looking for the tribe. We yeah. got a tribe here that are that is, um, you know, we need to communicate this one by planting one, sowing one seed at a time. And we're hoping that many of them will generate uh, or will germinate. Yes. Yeah. And Jeff and I are part of the same mission. Um, we, you know, we're on this together to spread that message. And, and that's why I wanted to have you on because I think your story resonates with so many people because, you know, yeah. diabetes is, you know, it's ballooning up as, you know, as we speak as a, you know, a um, chronic condition and there's so many people that needed to hear that it is possible to heal and yes. it starts in the gut. It ends in the gut. It's, you know, there's just so much. And like we talked, like even the mental wellness piece. So in closing, um, I'm kind of stealing this from a girl that we know, Miss Shannon, but what is one thing you know for sure? Like, I love this question that she asks. And so I'll give her credit for it. What is one thing that I know for sure? One thing that I know for sure is that what have you got to lose if you don't try it? Mm. You know, um, o o open up your heart, your mind to getting information and don't be afraid because there are so many possibilities out there. That's so powerful. Jeff, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm just, if there's yeah i'm sorry because i the phone started ringing i just oh, i just got it. De declined it so if think about what you're going through right now and if that could be changed what would it be worth to you mm. to have that change what what how would your life improve yes because i'm sure as we hear it's it's sometimes it's that that financial obstacle that we have to overcome with people like seeing the value of healing and I'm sure you can attest to less doctor appointments, less prescriptions that goes on and on and on. So right. <laughs> absolutely. What, what is your health worth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, bottom line, bottom line. Well, thank you so much for sharing this, Jeff. And I look forward to continuing to watch you blossom and Thanks. it's so great. Like you losing 60 pounds, healing your diabetes. So Obviously, if anyone resonated with this, you know, get in touch and, you know, we can let you know what, what's, what you can do because there's just so much and people that have been following me for a while know I'm all about the gut health. So like if you want to know how to do some, do something amazing like Jeff did, like just, there's never it's a bad all, time. It's all about the magic three. Magic. Yes. Magic. magic. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rachel. I'm really humbled that you asked me to come on to your live and to your podcast. I'm really um, blessed in that way. Well, so thank, thank you. you. Likewise. And I will talk to you soon. Until next time, okay. everybody. Be happy. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of my YouTube channel. If you loved this episode, just click right here to subscribe, share it with a friend. Also, if you want to check out any of the other episodes of my season 2.0 of A Better Way to Heal, just click right here and you can do just that. So until next time, be happy, be healthy, and thank you for tuning in.